This is the Life Journey Podcast with Quentin, a.k.a. Q Gauze No Days Off. From on the field and off the field, NFL player and entrepreneur. Motivating you to be the best you can be and getting you out of your comfort zone. Sharing with you travel, sports, and entrepreneurial tips with amazing guests on the show. Now, get ready for your life to change with the Life Journey Podcast and your host, Quentin Gauz. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Life Journey Podcast. This is season three. Can you understand? Season three? Season three, man. You're doing the big things, bro. Big things. Season three, man. We got Chastity Gibson on, uh, our co-host, and we have our uh, special guest. And we're down here in Atlanta, by the way. Our special guest, Greg Hammonds. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me, bro. I'm glad you're on the show. Like today, it's crazy. Me and Greg, we did an internship in New York City back in college. This is all, college felt like it was yesterday. It does. But it's already been like five, yeah. Five years, basically five, exactly. four years. So time has flown by. But we met. Um, I was in ESPN, and he was at. He was at ABC. I was at ABC. ABC, and we, you know, we uh, linked up, and we've been friends ever since. And um, continually, you know, adding value to each other and just helping each other out. So, Greg, man, like, glad to have you on the show. And uh, we're gonna dive in. We're gonna dive into this, man. This is Let's your life it. journey. We'll talk about your life journey today. Let's do and, it. Um, dive into everything, and we got Chastity Gibson on as well. So, hey, hey. So. Um, First question is, Greg, growing up, what was your childhood like growing up? Um, and I'm guessing it was in Ohio. In Ohio. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So growing up, my childhood, you know, really consisted of a lot of family time. I'd say for me, that was first and foremost. Like I didn't get super interested into fitness or motivational speaking or acting mm -hmm. um, before I first got interested in just being a good brother and a good son. Um, and, and so by that, I mean, like growing up, my family, we were, you know, very humble and, and just middle class family and, and always working to make sure we provided for each other. And by that, I mean both financially and emotionally, uh, leaned on each other a lot through hard times. And um, just like wanting to make sure that where we came from always stayed a part of us right. while also allowing um, each of us to understand that there was so much more potential. And I think that something my mom and dad really instilled in me at an early age was that like they believed in me. Right. And so that for me meant so much because the things that they would do in terms of just like allowing me freedom and trusting me right. showed me that they not only um, thought that I would do the right thing, but they truly believed in me going forward and doing things that they may have not thought of or, or may not have even imagined. And right. so that freedom and, and that love at home was, was really nice. Um, and then I'd say, once I really developed that relationship with my family, um, my mom, my sister, my dad, um, and also our out extended family, that after that love was developed, then I went into like the world and I think I really started to like focus in on school and, and really hone in on academics for me, which were really a big thing. Um, and after that, getting involved in some sports and stuff like that, but it all really stemmed from family. That's powerful, that's powerful. Having that childhood support, having that support system it's critical to a lot of you know young men and young women growing up, right? Um, and a lot of people don't have that, absolutely don't get that. But a community of people that love on someone—that's the same thing. Absolutely, that's the same thing. Absolutely. And um, Chas, I don't know if you want to add in on that. We got the same family, so we had a huge family, and you know our family just has blessings and blessings pouring down from generations and generations. So man, I could feel that like you know it's really important to have that family behind you, you know. You, so I definitely felt that. Sure. So true. 
I, it, there's a lot. There's a lot there, man. There was a lot to Greg's life and into my development over that time period. And I'll tell you something that I oftentimes tell students that I go and speak to um, because that that journey from elementary to middle school to high school was so significant and critical to my life journey. Um, and it really helped shape me. So when I was in elementary school, you know, I feel like I was very introverted. I was a shy guy. I was kind of like, you know, very, very low key and, and had maybe a few friends that I kind of like hung with consistently. And that was me. And I was shy and I was actually a bit more chubby. And, and sort of like, I don't want to say I was like overweight, but like I was definitely chubby and, um, and like everybody knew it and I knew it. And I think that that lasted within middle school mm -hmm. and in middle school, that actually played a huge role in my confidence, just like not being where it could have been and where I would have hoped it would have been, right, you know? Right. And, and it was just like, I, you know, I didn't know at that time about exercise and I didn't know about, you know, eating super healthy and things like that. But I did know that I didn't look like I played on a sports team and I was just kind of chubby. And I think it really hit my self-confidence and it made me look at the world and, and not always see my full potential. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of middle school, going into high school is when I really made some big changes. I told myself that I wanted to branch out from just having those few friends yeah. who were, you know, like very dependable and, and cool. I wanted more friends. I wanted more of a community, right? Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to change my physical appearance. I wanted to look like, um, like I had confidence and I wanted to truly have confidence. Right. And so I joined the cross country team. So to get in time to, and to get into like the sports um, side of things, I joined cross country and I ran and in that, you know, that experience of, of saying, like, I want to do something for specific goals. Like, I wanted a community and I wanted to look different um, and I wanted to be healthy. And so I ran cross country and I got all of those things. It was just like a fuel, a full transformation. And I remember running outside and, and just having the sweat beat down on me. And I remember even having like salt on my skin and like just really going through the struggle, but really remembering like every second I thought about giving up or I thought about stopping, it was like, I can't because I know how important those goals are to me. And so I consistently kept going. And I think that that after actually running cross country and joining a sports team and having teammates and having like a second family, it changed my whole perspective of life, bro. Mm -hmm. It was just like, now I feel like I can do anything. And that really funneled into my academic pursuits because before that in elementary, a lot of people probably wouldn't even think of this or think this, but I actually, and in elementary had a mentor and like really needed more assistance with just like reading and, um, I think it was mainly just like reading and, and math actually. And so I would focus a lot with this mentor on like, like how do I really become the best reader? How do I really, you know, become the best mathematician and, and really get good in that area? And after running across country, bro, I felt like I could do anything. And so my academics really excelled. I started taking advanced classes in high school. I took AP classes. I took IB classes, which are international baccalaureate. Like, you know, like I did it. And, and so, um, I just think that that struggle from wanting to be healthy and wanting a community really helped me in the long run. That's powerful. That's powerful. Chess, I don't even want to add anything. No, I was going to ask, um, I guess when you were a kid, like, what did you want to be? <laughs> so you, yeah. When I was a kid and I was young, and now you're like, oh, I'm the man. But like, what did you think you were going to be before? <laughs> So there were, there were lots of different things that I wanted to be. Uh, first and foremost, I remember trying to think, I think, I actually think first and foremost, it's like full circle because I wanted to be an actor. Like I would, I would get up in the mornings and I, I'm not lying. I would go in front of the mirror and be like, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. like, like I tell everybody that cause you know, like it, it was what I wanted and it's right. still something I want. So that's, that came full circle, but something else I wanted after that is I wanted to be a choreographer. So I like dancing and stuff like that. And I was like, Oh, I can make the best dance move. You know what I'm saying? Like I could jig, I can do everything. Um, and, and so I wanted to be that too. That, that's cool. I mean, they, as, a, as a young kid, like we have all these aspirations of what we want to achieve. And a lot of people, 
like as a young kid, you really believe you can do like you really believe you can do anything. You yeah, can. Like, you can, but like when right. you put it to your mind, like you can't. Like, I've always <laughs> you're gonna laugh at me. I've always <laughs> as a young kid, I had tons of dreams of wanting to become a Super Saiyan. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I wanted to be Goku so bad. I wanted to that's be hilarious. I wanted my hair to get spiky. I wanted to like have like energy sources. And, like, <laughs> that might not come true, but like that type of mindset though, like like you just like you said, practicing, but up, 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 like really practicing that because that's going to happen. That's exactly, going to happen. it's going to happen. You already spoke it. It's coming. And it's just you got to. It's just, it's gonna form itself. You already, Absolutely. You know, it's, it's about to happen, man. I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. So, um, I guess, like, what was your transition, like, what was college like at Ohio State? Yeah. The, Buc Buc the Buckeyes. The, no, the Ohio State, come on. Not the Buckeyes, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> stop. but I know that, um, what was that experience like there? That's a huge institution. Mm -hmm. um, you learn, I know you learned a lot there. What was that experience like growing up? Yeah, so for me, at, at first, it was all foreign. It was, it was totally foreign because, um, I got on campus and I didn't know anyone. I hadn't been in a space that big before because coming from Cincinnati, like my high school was pretty big, but it wasn't like gigantic. And so Ohio State is gigantic, right? It's literally like a whole town in a town. And so um, it took me really having to lean into that new person that I had become in terms of being confident, in terms of being athletic and being academic. I really started to lean into those parts of my personality and develop who I wanted to be in each of those spaces. So for example, when I first got on campus, I was like, okay, I know now I'm a leader because before I graduated high school, I was like president of Key Club, uh, not president of Key Club, but I was in Key Club. I was president of the Spanish club. I was a captain on the step team. I was, you know, like in all these different clubs and organizations. And so when I got to, I was just trying to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, this is what I came to do. So I wanted to like strategize and figure out, okay, this is a big pond. And you know, they always say like, you go from being like a big fish in a little pond to yeah. being a small fish in a big pond. That's exactly how I felt. And I felt like, okay, I might be a small fish in this big pond, but I know that there's something special about me. Right. And I believe that about everybody, right? We all have something inside of us. So I was just like, I need to find my niche. I need to strategize and figure out how to work the system. And so, I started by like going to different clubs and figuring out who I needed to know so that I could network and then build my brand and grow. And I ended up going um, to an organization called like USG, which is the Undergraduate Student Government Association. Mm -hmm. And I started off there. I actually did a lot of early arrival programs. So right. I was like interacting with people who were, I was ready, right? I was like, <laughs> I need to get ahead, head start. So I was interacting with a lot of students um, before I got to campus. Gotcha. And so when I got to campus, I was like, okay, USG is something I wanted to be a part of. Um, there was the TLA, which is the Logistics Association, which I got heavily involved in, especially in my later years, and became president of that organization. There was the Band of Brothers on campus, which was a group of black men who fostered just a strong sense of community and mm -hmm. just like really being there for each other. So loved that organization. Um, I was an RA, which really gave me the opportunity to be like a big brother. I'm already a big brother. Yeah. So I was like a big brother to a lot of my residents, and that was dope. So, so, so a quick question about the RA. Yeah. I think, because like, I know back in school, like, yeah, it was a couple of RAs that were around the, uh, you know, you know our, our facilities and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, anytime, anytime there was a party that went on, yeah, I, I was a DJ. Yo. So they hired me. <laughs> they hired me to DJ. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man, I know, like, this is. It was only supposed to be like 20 people in, in our room. Uh huh. And y'all filled it up. The whole build, it was a, two, a building, a, you know, a small room. And then the whole building, like, you got to go upstairs, like four floors, was filled with 200 people. And our room was the like main room. Yo. It was, it was a big, like, I got in trouble for it. First time I got in trouble on campus for something like that. But Man. how, have you, have you, I'm sorry, this is off track. How have you had <laughs> an experience like that? Yo, and you had to like, bro, knock on the door. bro, let me tell you, I got stories for days about having to knock on the door. I was like, 
because it was just it was just funny to me it was just like wow like people think i'm like their parent but like really i'm not i'm just like another student and so you had to like we had all these trainings we had to go through yeah. i remember like going down the hallway you had to like smell to smell if you smelled like smoke or any other substances that were illegal uh -huh. or whatever and and i remember yeah knocking on doors and like having everybody shuffle and like hide drinks and everything and then it, you know, but I was a good all right. I took my job seriously. And so when I showed up, if I smelled a little alcohol, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I know I smell a little alcohol. I'm going to have to peep my head in and look around. And some people were slick and didn't get caught, but some people were just too sloppy. So you right. had to get them. I had to write them up. Right. No, yeah. No, I understand. How about you, B? Like, what was the experience over there? About that dorm life. I never lived on campus. I lived off of You did? Oh. Yeah, so I had an apartment, so we had, you know, we had parties for sure, but like, I don't know nothing about like the dorm life and the RAs, like I had, you know, I never had to deal with that, so. Yeah, all campus was actually, yeah, where, yeah that's where the parties actually would, would have been. Yeah, was all, the better campus. parties probably. Yeah. yeah, that's when the bigger, bigger gigs came. I mean, it was cool. It's why, probably why I didn't become an engineer, so, because I was partying too much. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're gonna dive into the next question. And next question is about all right, that transition uh, from college. Yep. Now you're into now is that threshold between college and then your career, yes. that in between point. What did you learn in between that, you know, that point of your life and then going into like the full on career? Absolutely. So that that portion of my life was like filled with I I'm, I'm gonna be honest because I've learned so much. It was filled with a lot of stress. It was filled with a lot of growth, um, some anxiety, I think, in some points. Uh, but, but first and foremost, I, I knew, right, I had went to school to study business. I studied logistics management. I minored in Spanish. I, I knew I wanted to be a businessman. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, and so I started by looking at internship opportunities to give me that exposure to the business world. I was like, okay, what's corporate America really like? And so... Thank God that I came across an organization called MLT, which is Management Leadership for Tomorrow. Highly recommended. If, if you know of any students that are, you know, I believe it's in their like sophomore, junior year of college, like they need to find that organization and try to get in because it's really all about making sure underrepresented um, and historically excluded like candidates make it into corporate America and, and those C-suite positions. And so I took advantage of MLT and it really, exposed me to different corporations for example like um it helped me get my internship with um abc okay. and before that i had an internship with general mills and so my, my internship wow. with general mills was before mlt but um that that experience taught me like the real you know experience of being in a warehouse right i was in a warehouse and i was working with cereal and i was actually a logistics management associate so i had to like reorganize the warehouse and uh try to optimize for like cost savings and, and efficiency gains and stuff like that so that in that position specifically right there were a lot of older people who mm -hmm. i had to work with right. um in the warehouse who weren't willing to be flexible, who didn't, you know. They didn't want to teach you, they didn't want to be. Exactly, they, they were like, look, like just. Put you on game. Exactly, they were just kind of like, do what you do and like, we're gonna do what we do. Dang. But then it, I really learned how to build good relationships in that role because there were some people I was like, okay, I need you to give me information so I can put this on my resume at the end of this internship right. so that I can like get my next internship. Gotcha. Um, so I had to build relationships and learn how to meet people where they are. Uh, and then ABC was was a, a huge change, like going to New York City, being around so much energy. I mentioned that before. That inspired me to want to lean more into media and entertainment, really chase my dreams, really become an entrepreneur. And so in that internship, you know, I, that's when I launched Forever Phase LLC, which is mm -hmm. my company. Um, shout out to, to Forever Phase, walking your Forever Phase. Um, and that's where I really realized that I wanted to go forward and, and be something more than a corporation. I wanted mm -hmm. to have more to my brand and to what I was and what I stand for than just some you know goals that have been set by a different CEO. Yeah, I had I my own goals and mission. And so I think that's what I really brought into going into corporate America, because I still went, right? I still yeah. ended up in corporate America, yeah. but I, I, that changed my perspective after I launched my company. Mm. Chaz, you want to hear uh, anything on that? Because you're an entrepreneur and um, you understand that whole aspect of it. Yeah. 
Yeah, so in you're, you're talking about my personal company? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of Forever Phase, right, I launched it in 2014 with the goal being to inspire and empower youth around the world to achieve a higher education and a higher purpose for their lives. And so really made the vision why, because I wanted to not only give students educational resources, but I wanted to give them life resources, right? right. There have been so many lessons that I've learned in my personal life to allow me to, to live better on a daily basis just because of habits and, and, and different, you know, um, best practices that I've just taken under my belt. And so with Forever Phase, right, when, it, when I launched in 2014, I started by just going to different colleges and community organizations in my neighborhood and just trying to motivate the youth with what I knew. And um, I would share, you know, my experience with college, my experience with internships, mm -hmm. and that was that. But then it transformed into me kind of like taking my experiences, rolling them up into best practices and workshops, mm -hmm. and then starting to deliver these workshops. So I've delivered branding workshops. I've delivered um, workshops on just like achieving your goals and success. And, and you'll notice on my Instagram page, I do a lot of kind of like how to achieve specific objectives talks uh, because I really believe that everybody's working towards something you know and we exactly. just sometimes need a little extra push or guidance and so my company focuses on that and and also the entertainment piece of the company is really um, the piece that that excites me because I know that education is really important but the entertainment piece is what kind of like gets people excited and, and intrigued and wanting to come back for more and so I've always been into acting spoken word and and, and things like that and so there's a lot more to come mm -hmm. and I, I recently launched Forever Face Football which Quentin was on the first um, event of that so really appreciate you coming through and sharing knowledge about football because I just want to open the floodgates of knowledge to our youth and and just help prepare them with right. professionals and and whatever re whatever resources that I have access to I want to give that to them mm. yeah no that's good stuff man so like I guess the, the the next aspect the next thing we'll dive into is you know you you had a chance you know you you so you're going from Ohio State you did these internships now you 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 dive into tech. Yeah. That talk about that aspect. You dive into tech. I, yeah, cuz I yeah, you're like, yeah, I'm at I think you're at YouTube at first. Exactly. I'm at YouTube. I'm, at YouTube. I'm like, oh shoot. Like this is like right? yeah. so like yeah, how did you get into tech and Yeah, right? so the whole the whole jumping from wanting to like I was so focus on entertainment. When I tell you I applied to like every entertainment internship or, or job when I was about to graduate from like BET to MTV to VH1, like I think that was all like Viacom, but like I, all the big media companies, like I wanted to go there. And then one day um, Google reached out and said like, hey, we have a finance program that we think you would be great for. And I was thinking to myself, like finance, like I study logistics, like now operations, why, why would finance think I'm great for them? And I looked into the role and it was a lot of process management and operations, right? Which I did get from my logistics role uh, or my logistics background. And so- And, and, and you said they, re and they reached out. Exactly. They, they so they, they recruited you. They found me, you know? That's what hard work does, y'all. I'm telling you. Yeah. When you work hard and you, Tell, they reached out. They reached out. And so I think that I really do credit a lot of that also, though, to the MLT organization and just being able to be prepared in a way that, like, I was ready, right? When they reached out, I was ready. And that's a, that's a key skill for everyone, right? Like, where um, opportunity meets preparedness, mm. that's really what luck is. Like, luck really doesn't exist. You just need to be prepared. You need to have the opportunity. Right. And so MLT really got me ready, I'm telling you. And um, they came knocking. And I was nervous and I was like, wait, tech, like that's not entertainment. But I just, you know, I was like, oh, <laughs> do, do I do this? But then I was like, wait a minute. Like I did a little more research and I was like, oh, wait, Google owns YouTube. No, YouTube, YouTube is huge in entertainment. Like, right. oh, maybe one day I'll get there. Right. Like fast forward some years and I was at YouTube. So like, you know, I, I went after the position. I sat down. Shout out to Marmar, my homegirl, Mariah Scott. Mm -hmm. Love her. Yo, she got me ready for the interview. She she studied finance mm. and she um was sat down with me and was like, Greg, these are the financial statements. This is the cash flow statement. This mm. is like balance statement. Like, this is what you need to know. And I was like, okay, I'm going into it. And I, and I killed the interview, you know, and the rest is history. I got the job. So I started off in finance. Okay. 
And then um, I did that for like a little over two years or under two years. And then I went to YouTube. I finally made it there and I was still in the finance role. And I did that for a little under two years or no, I did that for a little over two years. Mm -hmm. And then I recently um, jumped into a, a like talent outreach role. Got doing you. like program management. Okay. And so now I'm, now I'm there, but yo, it's been a lot, a lot that I've learned over the years. Wow, that's powerful, that's powerful. Chess, huh? anything on that? That's no, I just awesome. want to say, like, <clears throat> I mean, like I said, you said you start off as a kid thinking you're gonna be something, and like you do anything, and then you know, just give you the way things work. You have to, you know, you to just make it make sense, and then enjoy what you do. So I think that's, that's amazing. Like, yeah. just, like you're where you want to be, you know, and you just didn't start off that way, but like, you made it make sense. So. Absolutely. And I think that for me, it, it's it's always a, a lesson of like, you know, you will never be always 100 percent satisfied with everything in your life. Like, I, I, at least I don't expect that I've never gotten to that point. And so I'm OK with having some of this, some of that and, and just making it work for the meantime, but always, always, always being in process and in movement towards a, a goal. Right. Like when I was at in, working in finance, I still had forever phase. I was still doing my company when I was at YouTube, still doing forever phase. I'm still doing forever phase right now. I think it's always important to just like never let your circumstances stagnate you, mm. paralyze you and make you think that there's nothing else you need to be focused on. Because your mind, I, I love the mind. The mind is a brilliant tool. You know what I'm saying? You can be thinking of ideas and visions about anything right now. You don't need to be confined. I don't care what your nine to five says. I don't care how much time you think you do or don't have. You just need to free yourself and, and stay focused, you know? Mm. Sometimes you gotta take a break too. Sometimes you gotta think of the beaches and the palm trees. Then all you gotta be work. Sometimes you gotta free yourself and just, you know, yes. it and just, <laughs> and then come, no, it's true. you know, cause sometimes you gotta step back and then come back to your ideas and then make it happen. That's so true. Yeah, it's like having that, doing like a, a reset on the mind or I always talk about, so, you know, I'll say sabbatical, <laughs> go, go on sabbatical. Yeah, we always say um, have an essence image in your mind. So like whenever you need to like get grounded, what is the image that's in your mind? Um, I don't know, for me, like some people will say like a heart or a palm tree or the beach. For me, it's steps just going up nonstop, step, step, step. Like I'm just going to keep going. Like all I see is just steps nonstop. <laughs> And it's like, you can't stop. You got to just keep going. That's all I see in my head whenever I'm like, what am I doing right now? Keep going. That's it. No, that's true. Like, you got to. And it's, it's a constant. You're constantly, like, updating. You're, you're, you're constantly updating your goals. Constantly, like, your mind is, like you said, your mind is a powerful thing. Yeah. So you got to keep, like, educating yourself. You got to keep on making sure you're, like, you're, you're sticking to your daily habits, like, the routines, the good stuff that's going to get you to where you want to be. And um, it's so true, man. Like, yeah, no, that's 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 some gems right there. Like, it's it's like it's this gems that people don't like. People that are our age or older that some people aren't doing that. Some people aren't like really like locking in on what they want to do. And lock maybe in. lock in. Like, but circumstances can cause people to drift off their their journey. Mm -hmm. it, it can, but like you can always you can always get back on mm -hmm. if you want to. Mm -hmm. Right. If you want to. And that's one thing that I've learned from a lot of different people is like, hey, X, Y, Z had had two kids. Dang, I can't even like I can't focus on my journey when I want to. Like you can. You can. There's tons of single mothers, Absolutely. single fathers out here that's Absolutely. like crushing it right now. For sure. It, whatever business they're in or whatever. And um, it's just that focus. Absolutely. That yeah. Focus. And I think that that's something, you know, I love the fact that Chester, you mentioned just having that time to step back and reset because now that I'm older, I do different things. I do lots of things differently in terms of my mental health. So one thing that I'm so thankful for is meditation mm. um, and just taking time out. Like, and it's so crazy because you would think that, oh, I'm good. I could have, I could have worked hard and I could have just said, I'm gonna sit down and just watch TV. And the minute I say, okay, great, turn off the TV sit down in the corner, turn off everything and meditate. The level of peace and serenity compared to just watching TV is a whole mm -hmm. nother level. Yeah. You need to tap in. Like everybody needs to lock in, tap in, find whatever you need to do to just free your brain and just have some peace, you know? That's true. No, nah, no, nah, that's, yeah, Chaz, you want to say something on that? Definitely, 100%, that's what I've been doing all day, kind of just, it's been like my first Saturday that I had like nothing to do. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I, I just think it's so funny because like I watch TV for a little while and I'm like, all right, like this is not getting me anywhere. <laughs> right. Necessarily really watching me, you know. So I'm like <laughs> exactly be productive. So no, nah, definitely take that time and then reset and then get back to it. Yeah. Yeah. That productivity aspect is super true. Like when you you could feel you could feel it like in your spirit, like mm -hmm when you're not being productive, if you're yeah. like, at least like if you have three tasks for the day that you have to accomplish, you accomplish those. Or if you, mm -hmm. you have to push it to the next day, you're accomplishing something. But when it's like, you're, you're just dragging along the day and it's like, you didn't accomplish nothing. And it's like, dang, like I could be further along, absolutely, but I'm holding myself back because I'm not, it could, it could be a couple of different things. It could be a relationship. Mm -hmm. It can be family. It can be, um, I don't know, just that T like he said, TV, yeah. it could be, yeah. A lot of distractions for sure. So many distractions. So that focus, that product, like the staying locked in is super critical for sure to where you want to go. And um, I was, I looked at, it was a Jeff Bezos had like, they had a post about Jeff Bezos today mm -hmm. on an Instagram post. And it talked about, it showed when he was 33, it, it does, and it doesn't matter about the numbers, but when he was 33, he was a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. He's 56. He was 62 billion. I think it's like 62 billion. But even before that, had a little, you seen the sign, you know, the old picture of him had a little sign that said Amazon in his office, mm -hmm. right? And that dedication and focus of seeing what he wants, like, to make it real. Right. You know? Yeah. So, like, I guess on my end, like, asking you this question, um, we're talking about future now. Okay. Where is Greg uh, Hammond's, like, future look like? And where do you looking to go accomplish and, and I guess you're, you're, we, we've all been, we're all in that office still get growing where we want to go. Mm -hmm. You're in that office. You have your goal forever phase yeah. and beyond. What is that going to look like in the next couple of years? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm big on spirituality and just being connected with God. And I always, and it's, it's interesting. I, I read a lot and I think that, um, there's so many goals and visions that I want, mm -hmm. but I think that I always leave room for God to just like show me the unknown and, mm. and just take me in any direction. So for me, I just have like huge pillars, right? right. Like pillars in terms of education, that's a huge pillar. Like Forever Phase needs to do so much more in the educational space in terms of me getting out there, speaking to students, developing content um, that can truly just transform the way people learn and mm -hmm. see the world is something that I really want to do and I want to do it in a way that it's not just me, you know, giving students the, all of the steps to take, because I think that life is so, you know, buried, right? There right, are so right. many different ways you can take. I just want to help ignite that fire in people mm. so that they know, wait, I actually know more than I think I know. I actually can get myself from point A to Z with some help along the way, but ultimately I am the leader, right? I'm leading myself. So I want to do a lot more in the educational space in terms of entertainment, want to do a lot more here. I want to continue acting. I want to continue being a part of film projects. So if you direct, if you produce, if you you know shoot any type of content, let me know that we should work and, and let's let's chop it up because I really want to do more in that space. I love the arts. Mm. It's just something about the the growth that I have personally and professionally when I'm working on a, a project that I love. So love the arts, love entertainment, and then from um, just like being the best man I can be. Like, mm. I just want to be, I just want to be about what I'm about, right? Like, I don't want to say things that I'm doing that I'm really not doing. I don't want to like half do things. I just want to go all in at this point in my life because we're only getting older, right? I'm almost 30, y'all. And I can't, I can't believe it, but I just, I just want to do a lot of stuff. I want to really be about my business, be about my relationships, mm -hmm. right? My friendships, my relationships, my family, building, you know, just solid community right. around me is something I'm also super focused on. So I'd say education, entertainment, family and relationships. Those are the goals. Mm. Deep. Let's go. Let's <laughs> That's, get deep. It. That's deep. That's powerful. Um, That's man, Ch Chess, I guess on your end, what are some of those goals, I guess, for the future? I mean, definitely, like you said, I feel like everything you said, like the foundation is like the basics, right? Learning, improving yourself, self-improvement. Um, for me right now, definitely, like, I think it's time this year for me to like, kind of step back from my business and actually be the CEO and not be the worker. <laughs> so 
So I'm at a point where I, I definitely need to start growing my team and um, help and bringing people in to help me. Like to this relationship for so long, I've been like holding on to it like for myself. I'm, like it's not where I wanted to be to like have somebody else come in and it's not ready. But now I think like this year is the year that I'm gonna have to let go and find other things to do to make improvements in the world and justice in the world instead of just focusing on just me and what I got going on. You know, some goodness. I'm good. I got to take care of the money. Mm. That's kind of That's- what I- this year. Yeah. It's really important. Yeah, it is. That's true. And, and like yeah, same but I guess on my end too, like it would be yeah, just that that overall just focus and like you said, like being a being a CEO, being able to delegate more, continue to delegate, continue to make things easier, but continue to keep bring in more business, keep impacting a lot of different people within, you know, Iron Visuals within Football Pathway Academy. And um, I think I've always just wanted to help people, man. Yeah. I think that's literally what I've always, I said, I always said, if I didn't make it to the NFL, mm-hmm. I just wanted to go travel the world and like help, like just go to different village. I don't know. I'm just random like that, but I'll just, I wanted to just help people. So if I can do that within, you know, just creating different organizations or if it's partnering with you, doing different, like just providing that value to people and helping someone else get there. Um, it just feel it just feels good and you're helping someone's life. Exactly. Their life, you know, like this right. is their whole existence. <laughs> yeah. That's deep, bro. That's true, man. So got it. All right. <laughs> so for anybody that's watching the podcast today or gonna tune into the recording, what is like the message you want to make sure that they know about you before you go? Mm. Wow, this, you know, this is good. This is good. <laughs> yeah, Thank good, you, Chaz. You know, one. this is interesting because it's like a lot of times I don't, um, I always focus on like what I'm going to give somebody or what I want them to think about them, you know, but what I want you all to know about me, ah, that's a good question. Hmm, I would say know that, know this, know that everything I do and everything I'm going to do is from a place of genuine love like that that that's that's honest that's the most honest i can say i think is because i I just want you all to know that you know like it's coming from love and and that way no matter what comes and what comes your way and what you see about greg or what you hear about greg like it's all love at the end of the day real that's real talk right there the last last question leaving with a quote that it could take for the rest of their, you know, rest of their lives. Whoever's listening right now, you got listeners that are live with us, but you have listeners that are still be on Spotify, Apple Music, yes. Google Play Store. What's something? What's a quote you could leave them with? Drop some gems. Got some gems. I got some gems. Let me see. Let me see. So, <laughs> a lot of times, well, all the times, like my business, the whole inception, the creation of Forever Phase stemmed out of me wanting to consistently and constantly grow, evolve, and move in a positive direction of development. That was the whole purpose. And so um, to be in your forever phase means that even when you're hurting, even when a family member dies, even when you feel like your heart is broken, even when you're depressed, you're anxious, you are down and out, right? There are small things you can do to consistently be moving forward. If it means that you cry a little less or that you cry more to get it out and express yourself one day and the next day you feel like you can get out of bed, whatever it is, right? Know that there is a way for you to walk in your forever phase, all right? Because it's it's a constant living thing. And the, the, the message that I tell everyone and that I would always say in my videos is if you truly want success, it doesn't have to be a phase but it can be forever. And I think that everyone needs to remember that you create and determine what success is. Mm-hmm. Don't let the world tell you what it is. Don't let you know other people dictate what it is for you. You map it out so that that statement can always be true. Cause I'm always successful. I don't care if I'm failing right now. There's something I learned from that lesson and I'm successful because of it. And so that's something I will always say is if you truly want success, it doesn't have to be a phase, but it can be forever. And y'all should really, Stay in touch with me. Um, you know, if you want to see more of my content, you want to follow me, you want me to come speak to your organizations, you can follow me um, on Instagram at mr.gregory.h. Uh, you can check out my website, www.gregoryhammonds.com. 
and it's H-A-M-M-O-N-S, and let's stay connected. I want to, it's all love, right? I want to inspire y'all. Let's, let's do it. That's awesome, man. Greg, thank you so much for being on today. Um, we really appreciate that so much. So much. And um, hey, man, like we'll have you on, on season four or let's the end of it. season three. Absolutely. Appreciate you, bro. And uh, yeah, keep providing that value. Make sure you guys reach out to him, man. Dude, smart dude, uh, tech, entertainment, um, actor. Like, yo, he's here. So thank you so much for being on. We got Chastity Thank you for having me. Yeah. All I could hear when he was saying his little, the end, all I could hear in my head was move forever by Beyonce. All I was hearing in my head, my head it's my move forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, my gosh. He's on and upward. All 2021. Yeah. One and all 2021. Right. So... Thank you so much, man, and uh, we'll connect soon. Absolutely. Let's do it.